All right, everybody. So this is uh, makeup for uh, <clears throat> the Monday 129 class for uh, logging and marketing. I wanted to give you an overview of uh, a couple of things that the U.S. Forest Service has been working diligently on for the past, oh, 30 or 40, or maybe even 50 years. Um, one is called the Forest Inventory and Analysis Program. A second is called the Timber Products Output. And at some point in time, it Maybe not in this class, maybe in the forest management class, I'd like to introduce you to this thing called the Woodland Owners Survey. Uh, just basic information uh, that the uh, Forest Service has been providing for us. So this uh, lecture is just a slideshow that I downloaded off the web uh, and I'm narrating over it. So a lot of the stuff I'm just going to jump over pretty quickly. Uh, I don't think it's real pertinent, but it, uh, a lot of it is uh, just stuff that I want you to be familiar with uh, about this program. So, again, the Forest Inventory and Analysis Program is uh, another name for that is the um, FIA program. You'll hear that routinely. We're going to do a, a quick little demo uh, for you to go out there and, and collect some of the data or use some of the data that they've already collected. So, basically, what the FIA program does is collect uh, strategic state or multi-county level data on status trends and uh, conditions of uh, forests, okay? Um, not just forests. I mean, it's looking at all uh, land uses, but it's collecting a lot more data if, it's, <clears throat> if it happens to be forested data. And so with that, if they do it over time, because it is a continuous uh, forest inventory, they do it, they, they revisit each plot um, about once every uh, six to seven years, then they can actually look at trends. So each plot individually gives you the current status. And then if you look at these plots over time, you, you can look at uh, trends. So there's legislation that had been put in place uh, since the early uh, 1900s uh, that allowed for the scientific data collection of our uh, forest lands. And there's been a number of subsequent legislation out there. The Farm Bill that you see at the bottom of this list is really what funds this program. Okay, the Farm Bill, uh, it's basically uh, through the Agricultural Research Extension and Education Reform Act, provides money for um, the Forest Service to go out and work with the states uh, on being able to collect this data on an annual basis. <clears throat> so the current mission uh, is to, like I said, create comprehensive inventories of all U.S. forests on all ownerships, okay, not just for national forests, um, and then uh, annual forest inventories on all in all states, okay, so that every year uh, every state's being inventoried. Um, national core program, which includes additional data beyond the core, uh, which are used to address specific. Uh, they they group the data, basically to look at the. Uh, um, specific regional uh, and local needs. So grouping the data to the southeast, to the northeast, and, and so forth, being able to analyze that data. Um, developed a standardized plot layout and sampling grid. I'll show you an example of how that works. Basically, we have about, uh, I think it's about 6,000 plots in North Carolina that get resampled every, um, about every six years. But every year, a portion of those, of that 6,000 plots get sampled. Um, they develop uh, quality assurance programs to verify the data and verify the accuracy of the estimates. Uh, a lot of folks over in Knoxville are working on that diligently and uh, for the uh, uh, Southern Research Station. Uh, conduct inventories with state and federal partners. And that's important. It used to be um, that in North Carolina, that we would have a, a bunch of Forest Service employees, U.S. Forest Service employees, go around and do the um, uh, do the inventories. Uh, they have since uh, don't given money to the state. So our North Carolina Forest Service actually has crews that do this work, and you could actually that's a job that you could get involved with. You uh, you don't need a bachelor's degree to do it. You just need some good forestry uh, inventory experience and they walk you through and they train you and you, you get to travel all over the state <laughs> on private property, sometimes maybe uh, facing down um, uh, angry <laughs> landowners 
hopefully that's not the case, but they, they walk you through all the situations that you might come across. And um, basically going out there and resampling every year. <clears throat> So they've uh, developed a, a couple of plot designs. Um, they just kind of a, a background of it. Phase one, it was primarily done through remote sensing. So they basically just used aerial photography and, uh, and other forms of uh, satellite imagery to break up the land into different land use classes. And that was probably back in the 70s or so they were working on that. Um, they incorporated local management inventories when they could. So, um, uh, but, you know, th that may or may not come into play with, with what we're really talking about here. What they started doing is this, uh, this integrated uh, FIA uh, data was really what we're talking about. That's when they developed this uh, hexagonal pattern of uh, grid across the state. And you can kind of see an example up here in uh, this phase three, they show you the, the hexagon. All right, and inside that's a plot. So basically, these plots are about um, three miles uh, across, okay? And so plots are about three miles apart. Now, anywhere in that grid, they could put a plot. All right, so it's not, the, but so long as it's in that grid. These plots are confidential. Uh, they do not provide the uh, lats and longs of it, so uh, to keep people away, because what if they're finding ginseng or or something like that, or if people want to alter the data somehow, they, they would know where the plots are, where they could alter that. So um, those plots are kept confidential, and it's very, very, I did my whole uh, PhD thesis on, based on those plots, and I, I could not get the coordinates for them. Uh, I would have to send all my information to Knoxville, and they, they would uh, run the data on the plots. Um, it was really quite interesting how I had to do that. But anyway, um, it's a good system that way that keeps, keeps all that informa information uh, confidential about the landowners and all that. So they can move those plots anywhere they want. And they will provide coordinates, but they're called fuzzed coordinates. They'll, uh, <clears throat> they could be at least a half mile from the actual coordinates, but they give you more or less the coordinates uh, with the FIA data. So you know more or less where it is. Um, so again, there's about North Carolina, uh, if you added up all those three mile uh, by three mile hexagons across the state, that would make about 6,000 of them. So we actually have about 6,000 of those plots in North Carolina. So phase two, they were collecting, we'll look at some of the data they collected for the phase two. We're in phase three right now, um, where they're uh, actually collecting a, a, little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more information, okay? So the plot setup, is over here. So each plot is about an acre. There's four quarter acre plots. That's what those four circles are showing you. Okay. And um, let me erase my little. <laughs> See if it'll erase. Come on, go away. Go away. There we go. All right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, they're, they're all arranged exactly the same. So plot number one is in the center. Plot number two is due north. Plot number three, I think, is south. Um, I think 60 degrees uh, east and plot four is south 60 degrees west. They measure out to those plot centers. You, you see this circle um, out here. Each of those plot centers is measured out that far away from, from the original plot center. Um, they, they know the coordinates of the original plot center and then they measure to all the other ones from that plot center. Um, within each plot, they have subplots, okay? So um, the annual plot uh, is, is uh, broken into a, a 24 foot radius um, subplot. That's that yellow plot in, inside. And that's a, uh, a, that centers on the, on the plot centers. And they measure understory data in there, okay? So they, they sample that. And then those little uh, micro plots, the 6.8 foot micro plots are just to the left, just to the east of each plot center. Um, and they're only 6.8 feet, and they get fuels data. Uh, that whole big green circle, uh, which is 120 foot radius from the center, uh, from plot one center, uh, they look at lichen data. So they wander around all back and forth through there. Um, then also just a little bit to the north and west 
of each plot sensor. They do a, a vegetation plot of, of one square meter. Okay? And then that little line that they show um, to the northeast of four, to the northwest of three, and due north of two, they do a soil sampling. Okay? And um, then they also do these transects uh, where they're looking at uh, down woody debris. Okay? Um, so they're collecting a lot of data. You know, it's, you're out there a, pretty much a full day collecting data on each one of those plots. Uh, comparison of the previous to the current. Sorry about that. A um, couple of terms that you need to be aware of, I guess, um, when they're doing these. <clears throat> thing first of all is you see it says terminology as a result of annual inventories. Well, up until around 2000, what they would do is they would um, only go back uh, to each plot. They would measure each plot uh, once every six years. Basically, they would do... Um, they would call it the periodic, and you see at the bottom of uh, the description of cycle, it says relevant for periodic or annual. Okay, so basically what they would do is they would just not go back and revisit any plots at all for about six years, and then they would go full force. They would send out these armies of people and try to get all the plots done in one year. So every six years, or you know, a period of every five or six years, they would go back and resample everything. That was the periodic data, all right? Um, the annual data is different. They take those 6,000 plots that they do in North Carolina and chop that up into six or seven uh, 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 groups, okay? And each year, every year, they go back and they measure one of those groups, okay? That's the annual. So. Every year they're out there collecting data. Okay, the statistics is a little bit more difficult to work on the annual data than the periodic, but um, they're finding ways of working around that. But I just want you to be aware of that. There is a lot of a lot of ruffled feathers when they move from the periodic to the annual, but it was easier for them in terms of data collection. Uh, it was, uh, and they were actually ending up with better data as a result. But do, so a cycle is when they complete all of those plots. So, um, and so all 6,000 plots, it may, take six, it may be a six-year cycle before they, they go and they, they get those plots, okay? Um, so that's, that's a kind of a term I want you to be aware of. You may hear terms called cycle, cycles, sub-cycles, and panels. I'm not going to worry about those other two right now. So again, phase one. They were looking at um, forest area estimates, and that was based on photo interpretation um, or, or, or uh, satellite imagery. So they were just basically breaking up the land into um, different forest types and coming up with estimates. Uh, phase two is, was started back in the 70s, and that's where they broke up the ground into these grids, and uh, they <coughs> started doing the field collection. So they were, on each plot, they were getting tree species, height, diameter, land use, etc. There was a whole pile of stuff besides just those four things. Um, and then in a, starting around, I, I think it's around the, the late 1990s, early 2000s, right around the time when they switched from the period, periodic to the annual, they moved into phase three. Okay, And the phase three is basically they're doing one sixteenth of all the phase two plots so one sixteenth of all the 6,000 plots in North Carolina. So basically one out of every 16 plots had additional variables taken, such as soil, ozone. Um, I kind of show some of the things that they were taking. So one out of every six uh, invent of phase two inventory plots, they also collected forest health data. Okay, that's I guess that really started around the, the mid 90s because I remember when they, that kicked in. So they're looking at things, ozone damage, soils, downwardly debris, crown condition and health, lichens, understory vegetation, structure and diversity. So they're getting all kinds of stuff now. Unbelievable amount of data uh, that they're getting on each and every plot. Interesting work that they do. So this data is used for a lot of different things, okay? So um, primarily what we kind of look at are, are some of these state inventory data. And so we look at stuff basically basically at the North Carolina level, or you could even go a little bit lower down 
to the county level. Once you start getting uh, into the county level, the statistics are just not that good, though. There's just not, not that many plots in each and, every, each and every county. So if you figure there's 6,000 for the state and we've got 100 counties, that's about 600 plots per county. Um, in, in good old Haywood County got, has got about 600 of these plots. Just not enough to calculate good stats on. And you'll see when we get to um, going through the uh, some of the inventory data. So anyway, um, but that's kind of what we I, I tend to use it for state or sub-state sort of areas. Uh, just get, one of the things I pointed out in the slideshow is that they're they're getting a lot of good data on invasive species uh, as a result. So the handle as to where that is. Um, something else that's very important that they are uh, that there are related um, inventories uh, that are out there that we're going to discuss. <clears throat> And two, the things I'm going to show you as part of the lab session of this of this uh, alternative excitement, alternate excitement that we're going to be working on, is the um, uh, timber products output surveys. Okay, I'm going to describe what that is, and that's a really good way on a county by county or a state level basis to get information about what the timber product output has been for various uh, things. Really cool data. Uh, it's not collected on those plots. It's actually done by surveys to all the forest, in, uh, forest industries across the state. So that's why it's called the TPO surveys. Uh, the National Woodland Owner Survey, that was that thing that uh, I described a little bit earlier. Uh, that describes um, landowner uh, uh, situations. What types, of landowners are, what types of landowners do we have out there? Whether they're beliefs, whether they're um, their thoughts, whether their ethics in terms of forestry, um, how, how do they own their land, um, all kinds of good stuff. And that's um, where we glean a lot of information about, um, you know, how landowner uh, perspectives uh, on land ownership. And so it allows us to kind of see, particularly if you're working in the private sector, um, you know, how do landowners uh, feel about their land. And so they do break it up state by state. And uh, at some point, probably in the forest management class, I'll pull that up and let you take a look at it. Um, don't know nothing about the Tropical Island Survey. I wish I knew more about it. Wish I was in a situation where that's what I was studying. But uh, <laughs> the uh, maybe someday. Um, and then there's utilization studies. So there's some really fascinating utilization studies uh, that take place. That picture in blue on the, on the right um, is kind of showing how a tree tends to be utilized across the state. Um, from those studies, we've learned a lot of information about hardwoods versus softwoods. Essentially, softwoods, they will utilize up to about uh, 80 or 90 percent of the stem on that tree. Um, on, a, on a hardwood, uh, probably about 50 percent of that stem gets left in the woods because it has no commercial value. So things like that, we, we learn a lot. So, um, you know. We're not going to be getting into utilization studies, but there are a lot of stuff at the state and for that. Um, comparison of past and present. Well, one thing that, you know, I, I told you the difference between inventory versus forest land inventory, uh, what timberland is versus forest land. So the previous surveys were only looking at timberlands, and now they're looking at all types of forest land. Um, so before they were just looking at basic timber information, timber volumes, growth rates, those sorts of things. Now they're looking at forest and forest health information. Um, the old one was done with aerial photography with field visits, and now it's remote sensing with field visits. And <coughs> excuse me. So anyway, and then they moved from the periodic to the annual, all right, uh, system there. Uh, internet links. Okay, um, the, the uh, Southern Research Station out of Knoxville uh, is the one, are the folks who you deal with when you're dealing with uh, FIA data primarily. A um, lot, of, lot of really good stuff. And in the uh, lab part, we'll go into, uh, take a look at that. So uh, this slideshow really uh, corresponded to Mississippi, so I'm not going to really dwell on this, but there were a couple of slides that I wanted to point out to you. Um, it was this one. That's a kind of an example of the hexagonal pattern 
Okay, each one of those hexagons is a, has a plot in it. Okay, each one of those are the phase two, including the red dots. Okay, now the phase three is one out of every 16 of those where they're getting a lot more forest health type information. So that gives you just an idea of the layout of how those things work. Okay. And again, you could look at a map of North. I couldn't find that. I was looking all over for a map of North Carolina that I could throw in there that had, and uh, I couldn't find the search. So anyway, so um, about that. Uh, Remeasuring old plots and installing new plots. Uh, so crews, uh, <clears throat> not going to worry about this either. This is, and so they also have some uh, some advantages and disadvantages for those who are putting in uh, just new plots with no remeasurement. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on that. That's more for the people who are getting involved with this. Anyway, um, I do have some examples of us working through the data. Uh, I think that's the most important part is what you can do with this data. And there's thousands, tens of thousands of questions you can answer with this data. But um, we're only going to take a look. I'll wet your whistle with it a little bit. But at least you'll know where to find it. All right.